You think, oh my gosh, if I could get my team to do that, it would be fabulous. And thank you for reading my article in this month's Envision magazine. Now in this article, I talked about the concept of, of making small changes over time that cause a dramatic transformation. How many times have you read a great article or uh, seen someone speak and you think, oh my gosh, if I could get my team to do that, it would be fabulous. Then you go about thinking how you're going to implement it and, and present it to your team. So let's say you heard a great way to go about improving your capture rate and, and the instructor told you to refine the front desk to give them a concierge style service and the instructor also said to make sure that you had a fresh selection of frames on display and make sure that the opticians are not selling out of their own wallet right how many times have you heard this none of this is terrible advice my only problem with it is it's not really actionable advice often in the optometric world we don't know what to do with it but when you are given paper thin changes, you know the directive and you're able to clear, be clear and precise about the direction. And you can even see the results because you're focused on one thing and the results then are gonna stick. Then once you've developed this new paper thin change into a habit is when you go about moving on to other paper thin changes with your team. This is how the most productive independent opticals are able to make really productive changes over time. Now, there are endless paper thin changes that you can make out there, but let's go ahead and break down the two paper thin changes that I discussed in this month's article. A prepared response from the front desk at the beginning of the visit to the optician at the end of the visit and all of the team members in between, every single person in your office has had the patient give one excuse or another as to why they are not purchasing eyewear in your office. Maybe, oh, well, my prescription didn't change or, oh, Oh, I'm getting my glasses online. Sometimes they even give excuses to limit their eyewear purchases, making comments like, well, I just won't want my insurance covers. So I encourage you to gather your team together. As a group, make a list of these objections that you hear from patients and write them down on a whiteboard. We call this list, often inside our Spexy trainings, we call this list, patients say the darndest things because they sure do. <laughs> so once your office has compiled that list of objections, ask each team member to write down the one objection that they themselves hear the very most. During the meeting, ask each of them to start listing out responses to this objection. Let's do a few examples. So let's say their common objection that they hear all the time is, I just want what my insurance covers. <sighs> Terrible. The replies they could write down could be all over the place from, well, good luck with that because your insurance sucks <laughs> or, well, your insurance covers $130 for a frame. Then encourage them to rewrite and rework their favorite response to make the, well, your insurance covers $130 for a frame a little less limiting and a little less medical insurance because it's not at all like medical insurance, right? You could say your vision plan contributes $130 for a frame or your vision plan contributes $130 toward a frame. To make it less connected, you could say this vision plan contributes $130 towards a frame. Then spin the specialty around to your office. Okay, Miss Smith, it looks like this vision plan contributes $130 towards a frame. Our opticians will help you find the style that you will look and feel great in, and then they will be able to offer you similar styles at multiple prices where you can contribute that $130. That is so much more powerful. Now is when you ask each of your team members to memorize the response that they created to their most common objection that they hear from patients all the time. We ask that each of them will share it with the team to help hold themselves accountable and then put it into practice. Now let's talk about the second paper thin change. Set brand allotments. Moving away from our verbiage and more into frame management, I will tell you right now, some of y'all don't have any rhyme or reason to your boards. <laughs> that makes me want to scream. And as the creator of Frame Turn, which optimizes data for over 700 opticals, I will tell you that this is one of the most simple changes that you can make to how you structure your inventory expectation. And it will start the ability for your team to be able to adapt your frame inventory. 
Creating an expectation for how many frames will be represented by each and every brand in your inventory will eliminate impulse and frivolous purchases. It will also allow for you to better analyze the frame turnover rate of the brand. So let's say you have a brand allotment for a specific brand set at 35 frames. You do not order above this 35 frame mark. Now, if your optical has made the decision that you're going to increase that allotment from let's say 35 to 45 before the rep visit, congratulations, you do that. So at your next visit, you're going to order in 45. This is the only time additional should be ordered when there has been a prior plan to do so. Now, this expectation to maintain is also true in maintaining and ordering sold frames. If you have frames that have sold off your board, you need to get that frame back in stock as soon as possible. You simply cannot sell what you do not have to sell. And if you have an allotment set at 35, do not let the inventory drop much below that 35 frames without reordering. A sold frame is your consumer's demographics way of telling you what they like. And if you do not reorder that style, you're doing your optical a huge disservice because y'all can't sell it if you don't have it. Yet there are many independent opticals that have open board spaces for no reason. Y'all, I need you to reorder those frames, okay? <laughs> Set brand allotments for every brand in your inventory and maintain that allotment on a regular basis. Then once you've implemented this paper thin change, you are in the perfect position to boost your frame sales and check out frame turn. I promise you it'll blow your mind. You will be setting yourself up for dramatic change. Now listen, I get it. I'm that stubborn, hardworking, lower your head and just get her done type person. This concept of slow, methodical, implemented changes was one that I wish did not take me so long to learn. So let me save you some time. When it comes to managing your team, you will have much greater success focusing on small changes and allowing your team to master those seemingly insignificant changes, then attempting, attempting to add another. This is a way better than attempting to add a whole multi-step plan that you fully thought out. It will seem like it's working at first because it's dramatic, right? But I'm telling you that you will look back in a few months and you will be in the same damn spot that you were before you started. So I challenge you to implement paper thin changes. Your team will have time to adapt to the change and create habit before challenging them with another paper thin change. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you in the next Envision Magazine release. Unless that is, you are a Spexy member, then you know exactly where to find me. See you soon.